Hello, everyone. My name is Julianne Meyer. You are watching Own Your Wellness, and I'm excited to be here today. I have to tell you guys something, a little secret before we get going. I just uh, turned 45, so this is 45, and I also finished a four-week juice cleanse the day before yesterday. So today's my second day eating solid foods, and I'm still not quite used to it. It's amazing how much more sluggish I feel having to actually digest and chew and all these things. But anyway... <laughs> I just wanted to share that because it was something that I thought was going to be impossible for me to do, especially with, you know, my busy schedule and working so much. But hey, if I can do it, I set my mind to it. You guys can do what you set your mind to do as well. Just make sure it's safe before you do anything serious. So without further ado, let me introduce today's guest. I am excited for her to be here. Dr. Jen Dunphy, welcome to the show. So Hi, glad to Julie. have you. Oh, thank you for having me. So, um, you know, you and I had a chance to talk for a little bit the other day, but I would love for you to share a bit about yourself and your own wellness journey with our audience today. Sure. So my wellness journey and my interest in health really began at a very young age. I was always interested in how the body worked and what made it tick and function. And I thought, well, I should become a doctor, of course, a medical doctor. And as I learned more, I'm like, you know what? there's so much more to medicine than just clinical knowledge. There's spiritual and mental and behavioral. And I want to be involved in all of that. And I want to help lots of people at once. So my journey evolved from wanting to be a physician to wanting to be in public health. And that's where I am today. I'm a doctor of public health. I help populations at large try to find out what are the best things that they can do to enhance not only their physical health, but their holistic well-being. I love that. I love that you made that pivot because as a medical doctor, especially in the United States, you don't get to talk about any of the other things that are so important. So it sounds to me you're more of a healthcare professional than a sick care professional. Would that be Absolutely. kind of Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I think that being a physician in some regards has really become a business and it's much harder to provide the type of care that I'm really interested in if I were that type of doctor. So that's sort of why I transitioned into this wellness journey. I think that's so beautiful. I'm glad that you, you know, explained it a little bit because there's people going, but you call yourself a doctor and I don't understand. And I just love that you still have all of this wonderful knowledge and education, but that you can actually share it now <laughs> to really, truly help people. What would you say is, um, you know, something that you've found is different, like the most different between what you do, for example, versus a GP? Well, a GP really diagnoses um, conditions and can prescribe medication and is really interested in the thing that's wrong at the time for the patient and their job is to solve that. So a patient will come into their office presenting symptoms and a problem. And the GP's job is to solve it, general practitioner or primary care physician, or they'll present with sort of uh, some red flags down the road and the GP will be responsible for encouraging behavioral changes. So that's really their main job. Or they'll refer out to a specialist if something very specific is wrong in a specific area, like cardiac problems, they'll refer to a cardiologist. What I do is different in that I don't provide treatment to patients. I don't prescribe mm -hmm. medications. I don't diagnose anything. I am really a research-based doctor. So I dig into the research and I look at what is the best evidence we have today in certain areas, whether it's mental health or whether it's preventing cancer, which is a passion of mine, um, or whether it's just being as healthy as you can be, what's longevity research say? How do you live longer? And I dig into the research and I find high quality research because there's a lot of people out there that want to say, take this supplement and that supplement, and it's all your lymph or it's all your fresh air or it's all, and it's, it's usually some of those things, but it's rarely mm -hmm. one. One of those things only. And so I dig into very high quality, peer reviewed, multi-site clinical trials. And I say, today, this is the best evidence we have pointing to these things that are associated, not necessarily causing them, but associated with this. And here's what 
I am recommending that you might do based on what the best research today says. I love that. I First of all, I don't know anybody who likes to be told what to do. <laughs> so, I like the idea of making recommendations and then people actually taking it upon themselves to do what's best for them. So, you know, really, it's like the title of the show, Own Your Wellness. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and you would be surprised at the number of people who are actually very invested in their health when they have the right information. It's really hard to find correct information out there. And even some of the guidelines, there's so many of them that need to be updated because they're not mm -hmm. necessarily following the most recent high quality evidence. So that's sort of my job. I'm like, okay, this is what you've been told to do, but the highest quality research actually says this. So people become very interested in wanting to be up to date. And that's what my specialty is, is being able to look into the studies and look into the research and tell people what really is important. Yeah, no, I just, I, I, you know, you bring up such a valid point to me that's like, you can find a study for anything, but you don't know who paid for it. You don't know, you know, who did it, how many people were involved, if it was people, you know, all of those things. So to have somebody that <laughs> can figure that out is absolutely amazing, especially when it comes to health, because it's like me as, um, you know, working as a personal trainer and a nutrition coach can't even tell you how many times people are like, yeah, but my friend so-and-so is doing it. So I'm going to do it too. I'm just like, oh, great. Like that's really not going to work for you. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the I fad of the day. Yeah. I know. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Well, what was it? You know, well, trans fat is one thing, but you know, just getting into the, I can't remember. It was the they tried to switch something out and it really gave you the poops. It was some sort oh. of fat thing. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. So you just, yeah, I like this idea of not, not being trendy, but current and quality and up to date. Do you yeah, find I think that a lot of these trends can actually cause harm? Exactly. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. Do you find that people usually, um, because you mentioned that people are more invested when, you know, they have this quality information about their health. Do you think that that's a piece that's missing from healthcare is not really having accurate information or up to date or, you know, it just seems like, yeah, that's the answer for everything. Here's a pill. <laughs> Yes and no. So there's information that's been so well validated and confirmed that there's no there's no amount of research, cutting edge research that's really going to go against certain conclusions, right? Like exercise is good for you. Like that's mm -hmm. probably not going to change. That's a, that's yeah. something we know for sure. But there's sort of this gray area of medicine which is on the frontier of development and evolution in which there are new things coming out. And there has been a lot of contradictory evidence in the past, but we haven't put the new evidence with the contradictory evidence. So there's these guidelines and I'll give you an example. Um, it's well established that salt is supposed to be bad for you. You're supposed to cut mm -hmm. down on salt. It reduces against all these cardiovascular incidents, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, etc. And all of the primary, um, clinical societies in the United States say to reduce sodium intake. However, if you really dig into the research and you're a good researcher and you look into it, you will see that these studies are actually not controlling for sodium, which is in processed mm -hmm. foods, and table salt, which is added like Maldon flake salt over things. Mm -hmm. And what is it causing all of these issues? Is it truly the salt, which can raise your blood pressure a little bit in the moment and then it goes back down? Or is it all of these processed foods that are causing chemicals to go into your body constantly? And once they actually controlled for that in this new study that just came out, they're showing that mortality goes up when sodium intake goes down altogether. Wow. So if you take a part, and this isn't for everybody, right? There's some mm -hmm. conditions like people with really high hypertension and really high stroke risk that should be on a low sodium diet. But to recommend it for the general population, I absolutely mm -hmm. don't think that the evidence 
points to the fact that we should reduce sodium as a population, depending on what type of salt we're talking about. Um, from the evidence, it's looks, it looks like it's all about reducing processed foods, mm -hmm. having natural organic foods, and adding salt. Add salt. Mm -hmm. Salt is so important for the way that our body functions. It's got a lot of important minerals. So um, I'm actually a huge salt fan if it's the right type <laughs> of salt on the right type of food. And the evidence completely supports that. So a lot of these general misconceptions are, are things that I like to expose. And then also things that we just don't talk about, like the fact mm -hmm. that alcohol actually causes cancer. Thank we don't you. talk about that ever. <laughs> And do you know what the major risk is for women in a study that just came out two days ago? Mm -hmm. It's breast cancer. Yeah. And it's is. linear. So the more you drink, the higher chance you have of breast cancer. So the question is, what risk are you willing to accept in your drinking? And people don't want to hear it, right? Like, I'm having my glass of wine every night. And you can, but it, you, if you don't want to get these things or have a really high risk of getting these diseases, there is a certain amount of moderation that needs to happen, but we don't talk about it in the right way that people can actually absorb and understand. Mm -hmm. No, um, yeah, that's what my, my mom was. Uh, she died of breast cancer at age 43, which is super young back in, cause she, you know, this was like eighties when she got cancer and um, but she was a raging alcoholic too. I'm sure that, you know, oh, it had wow. everything to do with that. So um, it's just fascinating to me. And I've always known that there was a, you know how you just know things intuitively, like you can't, it's, it's kind of like, um, absolutely. You just know, <laughs> like I know, I need salt. I know salt is good for my body. Um, well, and by the yeah. way, it's less than three drinks a week for a woman now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, what's fascinating too, is I'm so glad you brought up the salt because I always tell my clients that in order to absorb their water, they need to increase their salt. So sometimes I'll have to put like a little bit of salt in their water just so that their water will, <laughs> can actually, but it has to be it. the right kind of salt, Himalayan yeah. salt, Celtic <laughs> salt, or Maudon sea salt, not the table salt. Table salt's got yeah. a lot of preservatives and junk in it. You really want to stay away from the table salt. Exactly. I won't even use it. If they, I, if I have like a normal table salt shaker with the the round little fine salt. I won't even use it because I know it's full of chemicals. <sighs> yeah, but that's what it is. It's always about the chemicals. I know that when I lived in Italy, yeah, I'd eat the so-called bad foods all the time. I was like the thinnest I'd ever been, you know, eating pasta. Pasta, pasta is like, not bad. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> there's so many misconceptions. I could talk about it all day. <laughs> well, I find it absolutely fascinating. So <laughs> what, I mean, besides salt, because I think that that is a huge one. And that's actually the thing that I've been preaching without understanding for the longest time that there's yeah. actually science behind what I've been saying. So thank you. I feel validated. Um, but what do you think is probably the biggest misconception that you've come across that was just shocking to you that you wish people would know? Um, taking supplements and multivitamins is associated with increased mortality. Really? Yes. Is it because they're trying to substitute real health for that? Like we don't that? we don't know why we've controlled for a lot of factors, but people that tend to take multivitamins don't live as long as people that don't. Now there are a few exceptions, and that's vitamin D and in some cases vitamin E and fish oil does okay. There's really no evidence for or against fish oil, but it doesn't cause you to die earlier in general. Um, and so we take these vitamins and if we're eating a balanced diet, generally I, I think that they can have a increase in absorption in the body too much more than the body needs. And that can cause mm -hmm. a cascade of processes. It could, there's so many other reasons why, um, mm -hmm. supplements and multivitamins, it obviously depends on your medical history and so much. So for a population at large to make a conclusion like that, it's really hard to pinpoint the exact factor, which is causing it. But on average, if you're having, I mean, this was a huge, huge, huge study, hundreds of thousands of patients, and you're seeing an increase in mortality. Um, but there's an entire industry fueling supplements and fueling vitamins at, as if that's supposed to make you feel healthier, if it, if it, as if it's the magic bullet. And people love easy, 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 easy. So if you can pop a pill instead of exercise and 
diet and do all of these sort of harder, more chronic things that you have to keep up forever, you're going to pop a pill. But research shows that it's absolutely harming you instead of helping you. And that's not true for every supplement or every vitamin. And of course, if you have a deficiency or a certain reason you're taking it or you're prescribed it, then this doesn't apply. But for the average healthy person that's just taking a bunch of supplements, it's shown that it does slightly increase mortality, which is not what you want, right? You're trying to do the opposite. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and then also, you know, not all vitamins and supplements are created equal anyway. So, right. you know, what you get at Walmart. <laughs> what Sorry, are you Walmart. putting in your body? Yeah. What, yeah, yeah. what are you putting in your body? Where, what kind of fillers are in there even? And <laughs> When was it made and how much does it really have of what you're, yeah, and the quality, everything. And is it bioactive? Like, can your body use it in the way that it's intended to use it? And we know that there's a huge difference between, for instance, taking vitamin D orally and going out in the sun and how that's processed mm -hmm. in your body. And you actually need both. But people tend to think that the pill is going to substitute them getting it from food. But a lot of times the way that the vitamin is in the food has a lot of bioactive substances that allows your body to use it much differently than if you just take it in an isolated form orally. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. I never think about vitamin D because I live in California. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you, I took a vitamin D test. I take vitamin D and I go out in the sun every single day. I get my prescribed amount of sunlight. My vitamin D was so low. I was shocked. I couldn't even believe it. So it's wow. supposed to be above 30. And I take it and go out in the sun every day. I live in Southern California and mine was 36. So go get your vitamin D checked. <laughs> no kidding. My goodness. That's insane. Yeah. Cause I would think, you know, California, Hawaii, Florida, places like that. Ah, you know, you're going to be okay. <laughs> Cause I grew up in Washington state. So I'm like, I definitely need <laughs> a supplement, definitely. but that's fascinating. But if you're already taking a supplement, then how do you raise it? And you're already going More, out. I was taking a low dose. So my oh. primary care physician, and you should always check with your physician before you yeah. take, start, stop anything, change dosages. Um, mm -hmm. So I just want to say that, you know, I'm not a medical yeah. doctor. This is, I'm just sort of reiterating research that I've dug into deeply. And so she prescribed, I was on 2000 IU and she prescribed me to go up to 3000. So I'm doing wow. that now. That's Absolutely fascinating. I would never have guessed that, you know, being in the sun and, you know, taking a supplement that you would still possibly be low. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I don't ever on this show, I don't ever want to put down, you know, medical professionals in any way. Um, I always think that it's extremely important to, you know, seek the best health care. But I don't think that, uh, you know, a physician is has all the answers and they, you know, nobody does. I mean, that's like, <laughs> I don't care who you are or what field you're in. You don't have all the answers. <laughs> so. yeah, I mean, a, um, a clinician, you need a clinician on your team. There's yeah. no question. You can't do anything yeah. without a clinician. They have knowledge. They're so specially trained. They go to school for sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, up to 15 years straight to learn this knowledge. There's no no substitute for a clinician. But I also think having a research doctor on your team is important too, because it's impossible for any one physician to keep up with all the literature unless they're in academia. If you're seeing, you know, 40 to 60 patients a day, like my husband is, he does, he's not going to have time to then go have six hours to read studies every night. Exactly. So you really need, you really need multiple people on your team. And I think that healthcare teams aren't the most effectively organized. So I believe that you should have a research doctor like me on your team, providing recommendations, which you can then bring to your physician and see if it's right for you within your clinical um, profile. And mm -hmm. then, you know, perhaps have a mental health professional on your team or perhaps have a somatic professional on your team. Someone that's going to either do acupuncture or massage, like physical touch is so important for your body. Mm -hmm. Um, and then have a nutrition professional, you know, like you on your team and, and perhaps like kinesiology or physical therapy or someone who's going to help your body move in the right way. So really having a, a I think a forward thinking health team that mm -hmm. is inclusive of all these type of disciplines is critical mm -hmm. in a modern age because we're under so much more stress. We're exposed to so many more chemicals and I cannot understate this. Like every single oncology professional that I've talked to in the past five years have seen cancer rates sky 
rocket and younger and younger and younger. And you're asking why? Well, genetically, that's probably not the case, right? The genetics aren't going to change drastically within two to three generation. What, what is going to yeah. change is protein expression. So if you already have a predisposition to getting a certain cancer, and then you're exposed to that environmental trigger, that toxin, it's mm-hmm. much more likely to actually express itself and become a disease state. And people are not informed about toxins. So this is a huge passion of mine. Yes, it is. Oh, and I love that. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment, but we do need to go to a commercial break. So we're going to be back in just a minute. And for those of you who are watching us live, thank you so much for being here. As I mentioned, it is time for commercials. When we come back, we're going to hit on that topic. We'll be right back in just a minute. Welcome back, everyone. If you are just joining us now, I'm Julianne Meyer. You're watching Own Your Wellness. And let's bring our guest back on, Dr. Jen. Welcome back to the show. (laughs) Thank you, Julie. So before we went to commercial break, we were you were sort of just barely scratching the surface of this idea of toxins. So I really wanted to um, hop into that bit of the conversation. Um, You know, a lot of people are really shocked to hear things like um about dryer sheets for example or things that <laughs> don't have any understanding don't get me started on dryer sheets <laughs> i never use them <laughs> anymore <laughs> well I, fortunately for me i guess i have a sensitivity to perfume so i've never they make me break out so i can't you know in like little white pumps gee That's i want your body why. protecting you yeah <laughs> I was like, oh, the poisons are in there. Okay. But um, what, you know, people don't necessarily understand the idea of, you know, they might have an idea of like car exhaust, you know, things like that, but not really understand that, you know, their Glade plugins, for example, are toxic or, you know, what do you, what could you explain is what I'm getting at. Yeah. So I think that generally we have the mindset of an acute versus a chronic issue. So if you're exposed to a perfume and it gives you hives or a reaction, you're going to, you're going to avoid a perfume. However, if someone told that you, that you might have something happen to you 10 to 20 years down the line, you're less likely to avoid perfumes in the moment. So it's like having a terrorist 
threat, right? You're constantly alert. It's a big issue. You need to deal with it right away. And of course you do, right? That's fine. But global warming, it's sort of in the future and far off. And is it really going to affect me? And mm -hmm. I think that's our generally our attitude about toxins. But as you see people age and you see people start getting these cancers, it's not a joke. And it's not something that even takes that long to develop. You're talking about a few decades and the cumulative exposure is what's harmful. So things that you're exposed to every day, it's not that one time that you X or Y. And it can be like if you're exposed to asbestos, like that's a big deal. And you know, you don't want to be exposed to radiation and things like that. But in general, it's these little micro exposures that are happening on a daily basis that are chronic and they're building up in our system. And eventually it's going to lead to toxic damage to our bodies and our DNA and our brain, et cetera. So this is the kind of thing that we want to educate people on. And because it's so far in the future, it's not a priority for education. So people are, you know, physicians in general um, and the medical community is really hyper focused on preventing, you know, heart disease, for example, because it's the number one killer in the United States. Mm -hmm. But we're not focusing on the things that might be contributing to these chronic diseases. Um, and so it's really, really important for people to know what they are. Like, do you, I could walk into a home and now I can't unsee it. I walk into a home and I'm like, oh gosh, I see, you know, plastic being heated up in the microwave. And then I'll see like perfumed dryer sheets on the dryer. And then I'll see like a Teflon pan with a bunch of scratches in it and they're cooking for me. And I'm like, ah, get me out of here, you know, and I'll run out of the house. But like, no, really it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fact it's, do, it's actually not that hard to change these little things. And so that's why I wrote my book, the toxins handbook, which is about mm -hmm. making small bite size changes in one area at a time in a way that's really not overwhelming and inexpensive and easy. And I promise people, my clients, when you make these changes, after you make them, you feel better and you can't go back. Like mm -hmm. I can't even stand scented things anymore. <laughs> it can I be an instant true. headache. Yeah. Yeah. Cause your tolerance has changed. It's, it's absolutely fascinating what we'll put up with until we, it's like, um, you don't realize how heavy the backpack is until you set it down. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. That is, um, and how do people get to your book? It's on Amazon. It's Perfect. called the toxins handbook by Dr. Jennifer Dunphy. And it's, I mean, this was not like this. I didn't do this for any reason other than I can't have a, four hour conversation with every single person I meet about toxins. So I need to put this information down somewhere and I could just give it to people. So that's what this is. It's my way of communicating with the world. Perfect. And, and I also have a podcast that I did a while ago where I just did a toxin series and I don't do the podcast right now, but you can find it on Apple podcasts and it's basically an audio book of the most important highlights of this book. You should really pair them together because in a podcast, you can't get in depth and I have charts and diagrams and things gotcha. like that. But. Um, for those that are watching, the link to Dr. Jen's book is in the show notes as well as in the comment section. So that way you can access it directly. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to make sure everybody knows where to find it as well. Um, I've been popping up your website a little bit. What can people find there? What does it look like to go shopping on your website. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, I, I started offering these toxin consults just as a way to help people that really needed it. So I'm talking about cancer survivors that just really don't want to be exposed to toxins in their home, but who are you going to call? Who are you? That's what I thought. Like if you're a vulnerable yeah. immunocompromised person, if you're a pregnant woman and you don't want a toxic environment for your baby, like who do you call? You have to figure mm -hmm. it out. You have to sit there online and do hours and hours and hours and hours of research to figure out where to even start. It, it took me years to figure it out. I took a course. I took like a 16 week course. Mm -hmm. um, but so I, I developed these consults where people can come and talk to me one-on-one -on -one and they basically video the rooms of their house. And we go by room by room and just switch I products out, switch things out or get things like air filters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, you know, I noticed too, even 
Oh my gosh, for me, allergies. I'm like, okay, there's something in my environment that's bothering me because it's not, it's not hay fever, you know, <laughs> I'm inside. So that's how I can automatically tell when there's something amiss in my home is I start to get stuffy or I start to, you know, there, I just react. I've always been like that. I always react to things. I'm a lot more sensitive than most people. So um, what are some other things that people um, might not attribute to toxins? Well, I think that's the thing is like the, the diseases that they start to get when they're older, they're not attributing it to toxins, but every oncologist I've spoken to has said cancer rates are going up. And I'm like, well, why are they going up? They're like, well, it's not genetic. So it's something in the environment that's triggering it. And Mm -hmm. that's toxins. It's free radicals. I mean, we have to understand how these things are produced and how we can avoid them in a reasonable way. Like we don't want to live our life in a bubble. We want to enjoy our life. We want to have fun. But at the same time, there's such reasonable and expensive steps we can take. And that's why I'm just shouting from the rooftops. Like, please, like pay attention to this information. (laughs) <laughs> it's so easy um, once you have the information. And so that's sort of what I'm here to do. I'm a vehicle for spreading and communicating this information so people can live healthier lives. And you know what? Maybe you're exposed to toxins every single day and you don't get cancer and you're fine. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe you do. Yeah. Or maybe your children are affected. And that's the thing that people don't understand is little people, pets and kids are so much more impacted because of the body weight and the way that they metabolize chemicals Mm -hmm. slowly and not as effectively as adults. They're so impacted by things like dust and Mm -hmm. VOCs, volatile volatile organic compounds that off gas from certain furniture and things in your home. So having a air filter, depending on what your concern is, having an air filter in your home that's devoted to those specific things that you're trying to rid Um, is really important. I'm glad that you mentioned that because, um, you know, people think they don't, I don't know, they don't even think about the air quality in their homes and the dust and all these other things. And it's, and then water too. People don't realize that those water, oh oh my gosh, they don't realize how many, literally thousands of chemicals are being leached into their, (laughs) oh, it's disturbing to me how much, how many chemicals are in everything. And let me tell you, Julie, we, (laughs) it took me 45 minutes to install a reverse osmosis filter under my sink, which is what we drink out of. 45 minutes. Someone came in and it was done. That's it. (laughs) <laughs> and boom now you've and got boom. That <laughs> you know or or five minutes to order a, a carbon-based air filter online mm-hmm. and turn it on and uh change a filter once a year five minutes yep <laughs> i mean these are simple things people can do if they just knew the information and there's so much more where that came from well, you know, and I'm so glad that you brought up the point. What are you, where are you, who are you going to call? Where are you going to go? <laughs> right. There's no yeah. service. There's no, there's no field, right? There's yeah. no, there's no toxin scientists that's going to, going to come, even if you have a lot of money, that's going to come yeah. to your home and figure this out for you. It just doesn't exist. You can't, I literally, I was trying to do this when I had my babies. I wanted a toxin free environment. I Googled it. I yelped it. I researched it and it didn't exist. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to become it then. I love that. You saw a need and you filled it. What an amazing way to show up in the world. That is, I want to commend you for that because we need people like you that can actually be the trailblazers, the ones that show us the way. Somebody's got to be first. (laughs) You You would think, but let me tell you, people do not want to hear it. No, people people do not want to hear it. Well, it's fascinating to me, too, because there's just little things that I've done in our home because I I, I definitely don't know nearly as much as you do about toxins, but things like the dryer sheets and things, you know, like the plug ins and all. I just can't do it because (laughs) I know what it does. (laughs) It's absolutely good for you, though. I commend you. And it doesn't need to be this overwhelming overhaul. Like I I have a plan in my book where you can just do week by week and you just have to do one thing a week, one little thing a week, make one tiny little change. And I promise that every change people make other than the air filters will end up saving you money. I love that. What about cleaning products? Oh, so (laughs) cleaning products are extremely toxic. They have a lot of chemicals and a lot of chemicals that touch that absorb through the skin Mm -hmm. and a lot of chemicals that you can inhale 
um, in your respiratory system, which can actually go into your bloodstream and cause a lot of different cellular damage issues there. So in terms of cleaning products, I have a few, um, I think I list them on, I list them definitely in my book and I list them on my Instagram. Uh, like I have a highlight on my Instagram where you can go and see what products I use. I use very clean products. And generally, if you find a good clean product, you're going to be able to use it for everything. So you can, I use the same product for my laundry that I use for um, cleaning my bathroom, that I use for cleaning my kitchen, that I use for cleaning my stroller. Wow. That's amazing because mm -hmm. I know that for me, it's, it's always been like a little bit of a mental block. Like, and I, this is straight up marketing getting in my head. <laughs> I'm so glad that you made that distinction because, you know, it's like, I need a different soap for my toilet than I do for. <laughs> yeah. No, you no. don't. No, Clean it's up. all the same. And sometimes you have to change around a little bit. Like, uh, my husband had a huge issue with our toilet bowl cleaner. So we found, you know, we had to change around a few times. And then I found the one that really worked well. And I put that in my book and in my website. So people don't have to do all of the trial and error that we did to get to where we are today. And, you know, this isn't something that I, I wasn't like this always. Like this just started when I had children. Mm -hmm. I realized that I wanted to create a safer environment for them to grow up in. And when I dug into the research and I saw the detrimental effects that it can have on their IQ, on their endocrine development, on their cognitive development, on their ability to grow and um, actually develop diseases later on in life. I was stunned. And these aren't like onesie twosie studies. These are high quality, peer reviewed literature that is showing not only in humans, not only in am animals, not only domestically, but internationally. And mm -hmm. major, major international societies are agreeing with the research, but yeah. we're not as a country in the United <laughs> States. We're, we don't. We're, we're usually last. Unless there's a huge uproar, um, the FDA is, is last. Yeah, the FDA. <laughs> they're busy. I mean, they have, a, they have a lot of important stuff that they're doing, right? Like life-saving drugs are approving and things like this. They're yeah. less worried about the stuff. They, they don't have the resources. Well, so that's it's not like I'm blaming yeah. the FDA, but I'm helping them out. Like I'm, I'm helping, helping them get Wellness there. Wellness team. Wellness team. Like, you know, you can't do the one-stop shopping. <laughs> that's why I love, I just, you know, and this is my beef with the FDA is like you said, they're so busy. They can't get to all these things. So I, you know, when people come to me and say, well, the FDA, and I'm just like, yeah, but <laughs> let's take a look at <laughs> the history. I mean, yeah. all you have to do to understand how this works is look at how baby bottles with BPA were not outlawed until the 11th hour when we know that they can cause serious issues in children. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that I always think about, this is what got me to really, because like you said, it's kind of like global warming. And if it's not happening to me right now, I might not necessarily make the changes because it doesn't seem like drastic. It, it doesn't seem important, like an emergency or something that needs to happen now. And the thing that got me to stop well, I don't really use a microwave, but um, every once in a while I do, but I never use plastic anymore because I really, the thing that got me that made me realize was that, you know, if you say microwave spaghetti sauce and it, that little piece of plastic is never white again because it leached into the plastic. Well, if it leached into the plastic, that's leaching plastic into your body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm literally eating plastic. <laughs> you are. Yeah. So yeah. that got me. <laughs> I have this little clip on my Instagram where I took an EMF reader and I put it near the microwave and it's in the red, which is <gasps> really, really, really high levels. And now the research on EMF is mixed. Okay. We're not saying that it causes cancer or anything like that. We're just saying that there's some mixed evidence. And if you're not exposed to high levels, that's probably better. You know, we're not going to go crazy down the EMF road here because we're yeah. evidence-based. That's, that's the name of the game. But the EMF rate is red, like super, super high next to it. And I back up one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, still red. So it's about six feet away from your microwave to get to the green and EMF readings. Wow. So every time you turn on your microwave, and that's in all directions, okay? So it's like, imagine like a six foot semicircle around yeah. your microwave. Six feet all around. That's crazy. I know oh I'm obsessed goodness. with this stuff. I love it. It's just. <laughs> well, you're all lit up. I love that. 
<laughs> that makes it fun. Uh, we do need to go to one more commercial break. So we're going to be back in just a moment. And once again, for those of you who are watching us live, thank you so much for being here. And of course, everybody on demand, thank you for being here as well. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation about toxins and also, you know, just different ways that you can help yourself. Anyway, we do need to go to commercial. We're going to be back in a moment. Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV. When drug or alcohol addiction take over, things begin to disappear. Your friends, your family, and eventually, you. Recommended by Dr. Phil, New Method Wellness can help get your life back with individualized treatment plans for dual diagnosis clients. New Method Wellness provides the most highly credentialed treatment in a safe and welcome environment. Call New Method Wellness for your free consultation and ask about our national accreditations. Together, we can put the pieces back together. And we're back. Let's bring our special guest, Dr. Jen, back onto the show. Welcome, welcome again. <laughs> so during the commercial break, I was thinking about, um, you know, toxins. And uh, it's just one of these things that I find fascinating. It's almost like a car accident. <laughs> you can't look away. Once you start, you can't stop. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I like this idea that you offer, you know, through your book, you know, just these easy ways to start implementing because it's kind of like if you get too many options or you're so overwhelmed with the things that you need to do, it's like you freeze instantly. Most people do. And so I really want to acknowledge that making it more simple, you know, for people to, um, grasp and make the changes for themselves. I think that's really, really important. Um, what are, just out of curiosity, I mean, we've touched on quite a few different types of toxins, but what is something that like you were surprised beyond like that, there, that it's just not, it's socially acceptable, but it's really not good for you. There's so, I don't even know where to start. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I think just what's in food that you buy crackers, Crackers, because really? you feed your kid crackers thinking like you organic crackers, they're fine. And they're not. There's so many preservatives in processed food that we think is good for us. Even the stuff you buy at Sprouts or Whole Foods or these organic food stores. And they say organic and gluten free and all of these things. And you're like, oh, this has got to be a good brand. And then you mm. look at the ingredients and the uh, number of preservatives is frightening. Because if you look at how those chemicals actually physiologically impact an organism, mm -hmm. either an animal or a human, it's not in a good way. Um, and it affects all sorts of different systems in your body, all of your organ systems, the way your brain functions, your energy levels, how good you sleep, how you develop and grow, even as an adult, how you age, it accelerates aging, it acceler accelerates cellular damage in your body. Mm -hmm. And so I think that... The way that we eat, if you think you're eating healthy, 
think again, because what healthy means is not cutting out pasta necessarily, or, Mm -hmm. you know, cutting out sugar, although, you know, too much sugar is bad. Mm -hmm. What it is, is cutting out preservatives, cutting out unnatural chemicals. I would so much rather have someone eat full fat yogurt and full fat milk that's organic grass fed, Mm -hmm. um, produced in a high quality farm than I would someone be dieting. Yeah. Like light and fit. (laughs) Eating things with chemicals and preservatives that are meant to increase sweetness or, Mm -hmm. you know, taking out the fat Yeah, in a lower quality milk. Exactly. No, I think that that's a really valid point because as I mentioned, when I lived in Italy, everything was fresh and nothing lasted like nothing lasts a, a couple of days. Like almost everyone there at shops like every day for their dinner. <laughs> and that's, yeah. and that's how you're meant. That's how it's meant to be. You know, you're supposed to get yeah. those cold pressed unpasteurized juices without mm-hmm. the preservatives. And that's really what your body needs to thrive. And I think that if you just, and you probably talk about this a lot, but like just one week of it, you, you'll mm-hmm. notice a huge change. And so I think that the biggest surprise to me to answer your question is how we, what we consume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's fascinating. I read somewhere and I don't know if this is actually true, but that Americans ingest more plastic than anything else. And I'm not, I, it sounds feasible to me. <laughs> 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 shocking and disturbing <laughs> yes but also feasible <laughs> and the thing also to understand julie is all of these things work together so if you have chemicals you're eating processed food you have cellular damage your body is your metabolism the way that you're mm-hmm. actually so every chemical that goes into your body your liver has to deal with like you yeah. have to metabolize it and excrete it out or absorb it like something has to happen with that chemical and the more chemicals that you have coming into your body, whether it's what you're breathing or Mm -hmm. whether it's what you're eating or what you're exposed to through your skin, through the products, through your facial products is going to make it harder for you to process that next chemical. So every little thing you can do goes a long way in helping your body be able to process the toxic chemicals that are involuntary. So there's some within our control and there's some that are not in our Like we can't really change where we live or the air we breathe outside as much as we can control the inside. But the more that you do that you can control, the better your body is equipped to not actually get a disease from the things that you can't control because it's processing it correctly. You know, something that's such an amazing point to make because, you know, it's kind of like how much crap are you piling on? You know, like the less you put on there, the easier it is to even, cause you can't avoid everything. I mean, obviously you not, and if you're going right. to exist in this world, but um, you know, you touched on something that I think is really important too. It's like, I know a lot of people who are very diligent about what they put in their body, like through their mouth, <laughs> but yet their, you know, facial products, their skin products, their hair products, all these things that are in, being ingested like through the skin, they're not so careful with. And it's like, you're still in, in your body is ingesting those things too. So as, um, as women, what should we be looking for when it comes to like makeup, for example? Yeah. So, um, I have a list in my book and I would say it, but it will be world word salad to everyone right now. And I have it on my Instagram too. I list the top six chemicals, the top six chemicals to look for. And I recommend that every single person memorize these chemicals. It's not that hard to memorize them. And you can even remember just the last part of the word. You don't even have to remember the whole word, like parabens, mm-hmm. for example parabens. And when you look on the back of your product, you just look for these six for everything and make sure that they're not in your products or just in a smaller percentage of your products. Now, if you want to find clean products, there are a lot of different resources out there, which I list both on my Instagram and my book. I love the environmental working group, ewg.org. And you can search for a product, non-toxic, everything is non-toxic, and it'll give you a rating for it. And in general, the EWG certified products are the ones that are very green based on current research. I love that because it does change 
you know, it does I, change. Yeah, it does change, but that's amazing because, you know, I think that there's just like this misconception of, especially since I, I, you know this, but I live in Orange County and behind the orange curtain and yeah. <laughs> in Orange County, it's like, you know, natural and good for you is like granola and hippie. It's like this bad. <laughs> yeah. It's, people don't understand that. Uh, yeah, you might look pretty right now wearing this, but you could also look pretty and feel fabulous if you did pick something that was better for you. Yes. And I do all the trial and error for people. So I've tried, you know, I've spent the money trying these products. I've done it. So I can give you all the good stuff right up front. And you don't have to, you don't have to try it yourself. I love that. I love, and I love too, that you mentioned too, about the supplements and things like that. I've always not been a fan unless it is, you know, like prescribed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Medical it's doctor. Like, yeah. Oh, I have low energy. Let me take some B12, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Who's you don't even know, even, right? You don't know what's even causing it. Like you might just be adding something that you're, you now have to like get rid of and digest and process and all these things. That's and adding you, more <laughs> onto your load on your metab, your metabolic exactly. load than you would have had already, you know, that exactly. could not be the cause. So people being mm -hmm. their own doctor and saying, oh, this is going to help energy or this is going to be good for me. And without really knowing the evidence of what too much of that does yeah. is going to be a harmful path to go down. Yeah, exactly. Well, we only have about three minutes left. Is there anything else that you would love to share with the audience before we wrap up or sure. I something? I would. <laughs> I, I would love to mention my new project, which is a book that I wrote recently called Don't Tell Me What to Do. And it's about empowerment. You like that title? Um, <laughs> it's about empowerment and achieving your dreams and make sure that you're always focusing on the things that are most important to you. Because in life, we tend to get bogged down by so many different things in our everyday life. And it's mm -hmm. really rare for us to take a moment to reflect, to say, what's most important for me to achieve before I die? What's the legacy that I want to leave behind? What's the impact I want to leave in the world? And how do you go through that process of figuring that out? Is it a coach? Is it therapy? Like, how are we going to figure it out? So this book actually walks you through it and it gives you very specific exercises and journaling exercises. And it comes with a downloadable workbook that you can journal through that. as you go through the book. And then the second part gives all of my productivity tips, strategies, things to make you tend to more productive, get through your day. You do energy charting, energy profiling to see where your peaks are, where your valleys are and how to work with it instead of against it. So you will feel like a new person by the end of this book. I love that. I don't think I've ever seen anything available like that. So <laughs> thank you. I'm really excited to get the message out about it. Yeah. yeah and you can buy it on amazon.com. Perfect. Don't tell me what to do. Thank you. Yeah. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I don't even, when I tell myself what to do, sometimes I find, I feel resistance. I'm like, mm. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's me. Exactly. It's about so, living in your truth. So I think you would love yeah. it because that yeah. seems to be something that you do every day. Yeah. Well, you know, I real quick, I just want to say that, you know, we get so busy doing the daily things you know, like you said, we lose sight of the big picture. So that's why I love that you created this because it is so needed. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to pop up your website one more time for people to come find you as well. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the show today. It has been an absolute pleasure. I feel educated and entertained at the same time so <laughs> and not horrified <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my goal i don't yeah. want to scare people <laughs> well it all feels doable so i love that but anyway thank you again for being on the show thank you. and that is all the time that we have for today everyone thank you for joining us we'll see you again soon yeah.